Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought we would talk a little bit about history. And in my recent video on Elizabeth Holmes and Thanos, I touched a little bit on Thomas Edison and how we're really not told the full truth about him and how he's a bit of a fraud. So many of you started commenting saying that you wanted a video on it, explaining what I was talking about and also talking about Nikola Tesla. So today we're going to be talking about Edison and Tesla, their feud, their invention, and who was the real inventor and who was the fraud here. But before I get into all that, today's video is kindly sponsored by Audible. Audible is an amazing way to learn about a variety of topics from true crime to history like we are talking about today. Today we're going to be talking about the history of electricity and how it came to be used as something we use in our households every day to this day. And I found some interesting books if you guys are wanting to know more about this time period. First, I found the entire life story of Tesla and Edison, Giants of Electrical Engineering, and I also found Empires of Light, which is about Edison, Tesla, Westinghouse, and the race to electrify the world. If you've never tried learning about history outside of the textbooks that you had in school, trust me, do yourself a favor and try out one of these audiobooks. Audible is offering you one free book along with a 30-day free trial and two free Audible originals. All you have to do is go to audible.com slash Kendall Ray or text Kendall Ray to 500-500. And if you don't know about Audible originals, they are basically basically exclusive audio titles that are created by celebrated storytellers from worlds diverse as theater, journalism, literature, and more. Audible is a great way to pass time, entertain yourself, expand your knowledge, and it's so convenient when it's on an audiobook and you can listen to it anywhere. So make sure to take advantage of that deal. Again, that is audible.com slash Kendall Ray or text Kendall Ray to 500-500. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into talking about Edison and Tesla. So let's start out with Thomas Edison. So basically Thomas Edison was an American inventor. He's very famous and we learn about him in school and a lot of people think of him as one of the great American heroes in a way. Thomas Alva Edison was born on February 11th, 1847 in Milan, Ohio. In 1866 at the age of 19, Edison moved to Louisville, Kentucky and he worked at the Associated Press Bureau Newswire. And his first patent was the electrical vote recorder. But he actually didn't have much luck with this first machine, so he ended up kind of ditching the idea and just moved to New York City to start something different. Edison founded his own company in October of 1869, and at this point he was working as an electrical engineer and an inventor. Edison began developing a multiplex telegraphic system, which could send two messages simultaneously. And in 1877, Thomas Edison was one of the world's youngest inventors, and he had actually just invented the phonograph, which is what we now think of today as the record player. This obviously made Edison super well respected at a very young age and his success just kept coming. After he invented the phonograph, he decided that he wanted to create a way to bring electricity into the homes of the general population. At the time, people were using gas lamps. Can you imagine how different your life would be without electricity? Think of all the things, like look around you, all the things that you wouldn't have, probably whatever you're watching this on. And imagine having a candlelight as your light for the night. So in most schools, at least in America, we are taught that Thomas Edison created the light bulb, which actually is not true. Basically what happened was there were actually a bunch of different inventors that played a big role in the invention of electricity and light. Two of these people being Henry Woodward and Matthew Evans. Henry Woodward was a Canadian inventor and Matthew Evans was his partner. On July 24th, 1874, Henry and Matthew filed a patent for an incandescent light bulb made out of carbon rods mounted with a nitrogen gas filled cylinder. And today, incandescent light bulbs are not as widely used because we now have more energy efficient options such as LED, but they are still sold in stores today and are just known as a cheaper option. Despite the fact that Henry and Matthew had a product that really did work and was totally legitimate, they were unsuccessful at commercializing it and selling it. And because of this, the two of them decided to just go ahead and sell the rights to their patent to Thomas Edison in 1879. So if anything, Thomas Edison isn't really a great inventor. He's really just a good businessman. After he bought the patent, he hired a whole team to figure out how to make it work. They basically ended up using a carbonized thread that would allow the light bulb to burn evenly for a longer amount of time. And this is why Edison is known as the inventor of the light bulb. So all he really did was buy someone else's idea and buy enough help to make it work. And even though this invention was a big deal, I mean, it was great that it was working and it was a light bulb, he still needed to figure out a way to 
carry electricity into homes to power these. So now let's talk about Nikola Tesla. He was also an inventor who was coming up with very similar ideas. Nikola Tesla was born in the Austrian Empire, which is presently Croatia, on July 10th of 1856. In his life, Tesla was a student at the University of Austria, and in 1875, Tesla enrolled at the Austrian Polytechnic in Raz, Austria to study physics. And during his first year, he never missed a lecture. He earned the highest grades possible and passed nine different exams, which is nearly twice as many that were required. So even though he was young, he had extremely ambitious goals and he was a very hard worker and incredibly intelligent. And he wanted to create something that would change the world. Now the whole situation that Edison had going on was called the DC or direct current and it didn't work. So while Tesla was in school, he started trying to think of ways that he could make DC actually work. They needed to make it so that it was actually safe and reliable and not sending huge watts of electricity into people's house and possibly killing someone. So he had this whole idea to fix DC to make it work safely, and all his professors at the time thought he was crazy. In 1882, Thomas Edison and his company had completely invented the DC current, and this would allow there to be electricity carried through the city and into individual homes and plants. The first ever power plant in the world was actually built on Pearl Street Station in Manhattan, New York. And within two years, Edison built 18 new power plants. And even though they thought they had completed the DC, there was still major issues with it. The plants themselves were not reliable. They broke down a lot and it could only supply power to people that were half a mile away from the plant, which really kind of screws everyone that's living in more rural areas as these were only built in more populated cities. So Tesla wanted to create a version of DC that would be better, more reliable and more accessible for the general public. Eventually he came up with something that he thought would finally work. He knew that he would need some help to get this invention going though and to propel it into success. So in 1884, Nikola Tesla moved to the United States where the most famous scientists lived. And when he came here, he had no money. He didn't know anyone, but he was confident that if he got in front of the right people, he would be able to get the help that he needed to make this work. And that's when Edison came into the picture and he contacted Tesla. And after having Tesla do several trial tasks, such as fixing this one generator, he decided to hire him. He realized how smart he was. And at this time, he was still working on trying to get his power plants to get power further than a half mile radius. So Tesla thought this was the perfect opportunity to present his idea to Edison because he had the exact thing that Edison was looking for. So he started trying to explain to Edison that he could fix his system, make it work better, and get it to more people while making it more safe, reliable, and affordable. So pretty good deal. Basically, he talked to him about the idea of using a system that allowed currents to travel both ways instead of just in one direction like DC. But Edison insisted that he was crazy and that it would never work. But Tesla was persistent on proving this to Edison and eventually Edison agreed to allow him to work on the system, even though he had no faith that Tesla would be able to come up with something better, but he was wrong. This is when Tesla actually brought his idea to life and what he created was called AC or alternating current. So the basic difference here, if you've not already figured it out, is DC goes in one direction and AC goes in two different directions. And AC works a lot better than DC. And yes, I'm sure ACDC named their band that because of that. I just figured that out, wow. And Tesla claimed that before he started inventing this, Edison told him that he would pay him $50,000 if he was able to come up with anything that was better than what he had already made. And of course he actually did that, but when Tesla said, okay, here it is, now where's my money? Edison decided that that was actually just a joke and he never intended on paying him. And he said, if you were an American, you would understand that kind of joke. So Edison was a really great guy. So instead he was offered a $10 a week race for creating the entire new system. Tesla is one of those people in history who got screwed so much, it's honestly unreal. He felt like he was getting screwed over with a $10 a week raise for an invention like that. So he decided to quit and go start his own thing. He did not wanna give up on his idea, so he spent a lot of time meeting with different investors, trying to find the right person to propel the design into actual homes. And eventually he raised enough money to create the Tesla Electric Light Company. 
And he really was always more of an inventor than a businessman. So in 1888, he actually sold his patent for the AC generator to a man who was an American entrepreneur and engineer, George Westinghouse. George paid him an equivalent of $2 million today for rights to this patent. So even though AC was in the process of being created, it couldn't quite be in homes yet because they hadn't figured out how to lower the amount of electricity that was actually going into the home so that people didn't turn it on and get electrocuted. And after doing some research, Tesla actually came across these two European engineers who had created something called a transformer. Basically, it's a device that allows high voltage electricity to travel into your house and then lowers the voltage of it when it is actually used in your home. So they ended up using a transformer to help with the longer distance traveling electricity and then to lower the voltage in people's houses. And once he sold this to George Westinghouse, many electric companies started to switch to AC. So DC was becoming used less and less, and by 1890, over a dozen electric companies had merged down to three. Edison General Electric, Thomas Houston, and Westinghouse, which was owned by George Westinghouse, who was the man who bought Tesla's AC patent. So this is when Edison became a little bit savage. He was pretty pissed off about the fact that everyone was switching to Tesla's invention instead of his. He did not like this competition, especially with someone who was an ex-employee, and so he started trying to tarnish the reputation of Westinghouse. He started saying that the AC system was extremely unsafe and basically a death warrant and that by putting any type of system into your house, you were going to kill them within six months. And this is basically how the war of the electric currents started. So like I said, Edison was very savage in his way of trying to get people to not want to use AC. He decided to pay children to find him stray dogs and then he would electrocute the dogs in public, on public display. He said that this would show how dangerous AC current was. And he didn't stop at dogs. He also did horses, baby cows, and even an elephant using alternating current. And as you can imagine, people were really freaked out. I mean, this was really brutal for people to see in the streets. And he was also a big advocate for using AC as the type of power that was used in the electric chair to kill people. He ended up actually creating an electric chair using AC, and in 1890, the first person was put into the electric chair. His name was William Kemmler, and he was convicted of murdering his wife, and therefore got a thousand volts sent through his body. And apparently his death was extremely gruesome and torturous, I honestly can't imagine. And he started calling it the death current, trying to make AC look like something that was very, very scary. But despite all this, Tesla and Westinghouse were still able to pull off a huge accomplishment. By 1893, the company Westinghouse ended up winning a bid to be the supplier for the electrical power for the world's Columbian Exposition, which was basically a giant fair that was held in Chicago in 1893 to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus' arrival, who is also trash, but that's a different story. I have a video. Check it out, it's linked below. And this was a huge shock because everyone just figured that Edison would be the one to do the event, but instead it was Westinghouse. So Tesla was really proud of this and it made him even more determined to show people that AC was the better option. So the Niagara Falls Power Company was looking for someone to figure out a way to be able to use the waterfall in New York and Canada to generate power. Niagara Falls has about 225,000 cubic feet of water that is constantly flowing down the mountain every single second of every single day. And if they were able to figure out a way to turn this into energy, that would be pretty awesome. And maybe would be able to generate the equivalent to more than 1 million tons of coal per year. So Tesla and Westinghouse were determined to be the ones to come up with the solution. Meanwhile, people on the board at Edison's company were also working with the Niagara Falls people to try and find a way to turn the waterfalls into energy as well. The board knew the advantages of working with AC and then in order to be successful and take credit for figuring out a way to turn the waterfall into electricity, they needed to start using the latest technology. AC. So one day Edison's company decided to inform him that they were going to start using AC. Not only that, they were going to change the company name from Edison Electric to General Electric or GE, which many of you probably have GE appliances in your house today. And he did not want to have anything to do with this. He hated AC, he hated Tesla, so he bailed. He quit his own company and went and started a new company. And the funniest part about it is his new company ended up using AC current as well. So as you may have guessed, 
protest, this Niagara Falls company decided to go ahead and use Tesla's invention. Basically, Tesla and his team came up with a plan that would involve digging massive shafts into the rocks of Niagara Falls. The water would then fall from the shafts and then the water would spin turbine blades that are located inside the shafts, which would then generate electricity. And before this happened, Westinghouse was actually on the brink of bankruptcy because of the fact that they owed so much money from legal battles with Edison's company, as well as the amount of money that they owed to Tesla himself for licensing fees. But Tesla was such a good person and truly wasn't in it for the money. He really wanted to see something that would change the world, get into you know millions of people's houses. So in order to save Westinghouse from going out of business, Tesla decided to give up all his licensing fees for his patents. And this basically saved Westinghouse from going out of business completely, which is crazy. And I don't think a lot of people know that. So their whole project with Niagara Falls was a success. And the Niagara Falls plant ended up having 8 million volts at the plant, which back then was basically unheard of. So it was pretty incredible. Meanwhile, Edison's company was starting to suffer. And this made a lot of stakeholders in the company angry, including one that you may know of called JP Morgan. And now JP Morgan is one of the sketchiest dudes in history. Like if you're into conspiracy theories about history, you probably know about JP Morgan. Um, I have a whole podcast on the Morgan family. If you're interested in checking it out, I will link it below. But JP Morgan was a real sketch dude. JP Morgan had a lot of stake in Edison's company. So when the company was being outrun by Westinghouse and others that used AC, he was not happy. So JP Morgan tried to convince Tesla to sell all of his patents to him and his entire business so that he could start profiting from all the success that Tesla had. However, Tesla decided not to do this because he heard the reputation of JP Morgan. He knew the sketchiness that was going on behind the scenes and he did not want to give all of these patents to him because he thought he would keep it for himself. He wouldn't, you know, make it easily accessible to the rest of the world. He knew JP Morgan was really only out for himself and the most elite people of the world and making money. So Tesla refused to sell anything to JP Morgan, which is awesome because the world could be different today if he had. And this really pissed off JP Morgan because he was a super successful and wealthy person that no one at the time said no to. I mean, he was like the guy. So one night after Tesla told him no, his lab randomly caught fire and burned to the ground. So to this day, no one knows exactly how this fire was started, but a lot of people think it was someone that was working for JP Morgan or Edison. So Tesla got screwed again. And after agreeing to not even be paid by Westinghouse for their patents, he was really poor and didn't have anything to his name. He had put everything he had into his inventions and making them work and this dream he had. And now he had really nothing to show for it. And it's really sad, but Tesla ended up becoming very mentally ill. He was known for having OCD CD, and it got worse as he got older to the point where it was almost controlling his life and he found it hard to focus or work on anything. He basically became paralyzed and everyone around him benefited and capitalized off of his patents. Tesla lived out his final years living in a hotel in New York and on January 7th, 1943 at the age of 86, Tesla died alone in his hotel room. It's incredibly sad and quickly after he died, the US alien property custodian came in and took a bunch of his documents, a bunch of his papers, and they were eventually handed off to Donald Trump's uncle. That is a true story, guys. <laughs> I have a video on that. I will link it below as well. But anyway, Tesla just got screwed over and over and over again until the day he died. Meanwhile, Edison, who was a less successful inventor, really got to soak up all of the glory. He was awarded over a thousand patents in his career, which is more than any inventor in history. But to this day, like 99% of power in the United States is AC current, AKA Tesla's invention, not Edison's. So him being the inventor of electricity is just not true. Tesla doesn't often even get mentioned in schools. I mean, you're lucky if you get to hear about him in history. I barely remember learning about him. It's truly crazy. So pretty fascinating stuff here, guys. Let me know if you guys want more videos on like truths about history. There's a lot of fuckery that you probably didn't learn in school. So if you want me to do more videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. And that's it for me today, guys. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.